everyone, Amanda here from scrimpingmummy.stampingup.net uh, Today I'm going to make you a cute gift box easel card um, I've uh, been looking on Pinterest and there's lots and lots of variations of this and I've been practicing a couple today so I'll do one today and I might do another one um, later in the week or next week so I'm going to be using fancy phrases, I've not used this set before and I'm going to use this for the card element of my easel um, box card but first of all I'll show you how we're going to make the boxes and it's awesome fun it's a great way to use up at 6x6 six six, alright so to make this you need four of these four 6x6 six six pieces of DSP I'm using um, flowers for all seasons and I want this to be the outside it's lovely so I'm going to turn it over and what I'm going to do first of all is fold it in half alright and um, we're going to make a little origami box. So we're going to fold that in half, one way, and then we're going to fold it in half the other way. Okay. I'm just going to zoom in a right little bit so you can see. And there's lots and lots of ways you can use this box once you've mastered how to make it. Um, you can do it how I'm doing it today. You can stack them up. You, there's loads of things you can do. All right, so... And then you fold each corner to the middle. Okay. It's quite forgiving if you don't get it perfect, but do your best. Okay. Let's pull that over a right little bit. Okay. that one and then fold to the middle on the last one and then what you do just don't want them overlapping on that edge there pull that up and pull that down so what you don't want is they don't want them to overlapping otherwise it'll be bulky and it won't fold right all right let me just adjust that ever so slightly so then what you do is you fold this edge here here <laughs> here uh, up to the middle okay so that edge is going to go to the middle there okay so and give it a crease because it starts to get quite thick it's lovely quality paper and it is going to make a lovely sturdy little box so then you unfold it and you do the same all the way around so each edge you're folding from there to the centre nothing new I've not invented it there's 101 tutorials like this and pictures on Pinterest I'm just um, showing you in case you've not seen it and also to show off these lovely lovely papers uh, the quality of them is stunning the colours are beautiful and you get an awful lot in the pack as well, um, so it'll last you ages. Got some of our stunning brand new in colours there. We've got Magenta Madness, we've got the Bumblebee, and we've got the other one whose name I've temporarily forgotten. <laughs> Let me try to remember what it is. It's, it's just Jade. Alright, so those are all folded. Um, so then what you want to do is lift it out a top and lift out a bottom. Okay? And then lift the sides up like that. Okay, so that's going to be the side. And then here, all you've got to do is that. Just press your fingers on them two little squares where that bit's overlapping. So lift it up, press it in, and it'll want to automatically want to fold. You don't even have to do anything, it'll want to do it. Okay, so you're folding. All right, and then you've got a score line there and a score line there. So it will fold in. Okay, and then that will line the bottom of your box. Okay, and then just go in with your bone folder and give it a good crease. Okay, so I'll show you again here. So you've got your sides there, and then you've got a score there, score there, and a point. So you put your fingers just here, okay, just here, and push. Yeah, oops. <laughs> so you can see that you've got a square there with one lot of DSP and then the other side there. And then you've got the little triangle. So put your finger on this bit, on the outside, and push in. All right, and it'll just automatically, like I said, it'll just want to fold. All right. And uh, then you just fold that over. 
and you do chuck it in and it all just goes lovely now you can line the bottom of the box as well if you want or you can just glue that paper down okay you can line it if you want but it looks pretty enough I don't feel like it's necessary I'm just going to zoom out so you want four of those and then um, before you fold that bit over perhaps if you've got some split pins or some little handles or you want to put ribbon then you put that in I'm just going to do little thumb notches to make it easier so I've just got my three quarter of an inch circle punch there okay use what you've got and I'm just going to center it and punch myself a little thumb notch like so all right so you want four of those Set that to one side and then we're going to create a liner for it. So here's a piece of bumblebee and this measures 7 and 5 eighths by 2 and 1 eighth. Okay, so I'm just going to get my scoreboard, uh, not my scoreboard, my trimmer because I use my trimmer for everything unless I'm using 12 by 12 paper. Right, so now I want to score at 7 eighths of an inch so it's um, we're, we're in sixteenths and, and it's seven eighths of an inch which is the, the you've got three quarters there which is a large one then you've got a small one then you've got a medium then you've got a small it's the uh, next to last before the, the one inch if you're not sure on inches again I've done videos on it before there's loads and loads of things on Pinterest type it in um, okay so that's seven eighths of an inch and then we want to go three and one eighth. And then we're going four and a quarter. I'm saying the measurements slowly in case I don't blog. I really don't enjoy blogging. So I'll say the measurements slowly. And then six and a half. So I'll just pull my arm out. Okay. And I'm going to six and a half. Okay, so I'll just repeat those. If you miss them, you can always stop the video and rewind it. So we've got seven eighths, three and one eighth, four and a quarter, six and a half. All right, and that is going to be the liner for your box to turn it into a drawer. Okay, okay. You get some tape, and then you've got a small panel and a and a. You want to put your tape or your glue on the smallest end flap, okay? And then when you've removed that, you should be able to just fold that over and it'll go, you know, like fold flat. But I just don't, I don't like to take it for granted. So I line it up, holding my fingers either side and as you can see, it folds flat and then it pops up like that, okay? And that is the liner for your little box. Okay, and you do four of them. Ta da! <laughs> now these are great. We're going to make where we've got four like this, I think. Like that. Uh, let me think. Uh, like that and like that. Yeah? And we're going to make a base and we're going to do an easel card. However, you can stack them like so. Okay. And you could have them like that, okay. Uh, you could have a sets of two and then you just do an outside wrap for them. So once you've mastered the little box, you, there's lots of different ways you can do it. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some glue. And let me just get a piece of scrap. Just get a piece of scrap. Oop, this water, this glue's gone watery, you see. That's why I wanted to check. There we go, I'll just clean that up because it's been really, really warm. Um, my glue sits on the windowsill and that's why I wanted to check it because <laughs> I had a feeling it was going to be watery. Okay, give it a shake, it'll be all right. So what I've got is I've got two pieces of five by five card, one for the bottom and one for the top. So what we're going to do is we are going to um line up our boxes and glue them on all right let me just have a think where i'm gonna where i'm gonna glue them first let me just have a bit of a plan 
And that one going that way, that one going that way, that one going that way, and that one going that way. Okay. So I'm just going to bob that down. Okay. Doing it by eye, give it a little press. Just take the drawer out, get your fingers in and give it a little press. Okay. Wait for that to dry a minute. Okay, and then go on and do your next one. And if you butt them up against each other, then that'll act as like the back for the drawer to stop it going any further, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I'll just take my drawer out. Put some glue on that. Bottom. Right, so line that up like so. Give it a press. Move it over a little tiny bit sliver of a bit. And then you can line it up properly. Alright, if it's not perfect, don't worry too much. Okay, paper craft should be fun. You shouldn't be stressing about whether it's perfect. Okay. And take that one out. We'll do the next one. And we'll have that on that. Like so. Uh, if you really are one of those people that needs it perfect, you could draw out a grid with a pencil to make sure they're all exactly lined up if you if that's how you need to. To be, some people are more precise than others. Okay. And then I'll put this one here. Like so. Okay. Alright, and then I can put my little drawers back in. One. Now, another idea that I did have was, so that's one layer, so we're going to put a lid on there, okay? One idea that I did have was that you card could do multiple layers and have it as an advent calendar. That's an, another idea of how you could use, there's loads of ways you could use this. I think it's a brilliant little, little thing. Right, so I'm going to put glue on the top of here now. If you want it more sturdy, you could wrap the top and the bottom with chipboard. There's loads of ideas. All right, so I think I'll, I think I'll take the boxes out while I do this, and then I can get my little porky fingers in and press it if I need to. So I'm just going to layer that on the top like so. Try and judge it by eye. Okay, push that one in a bit, just adjust them. This is why I'm using wet glue instead of tape, so that I've got time to move those boxes about. Give it a little bit of a press. Let's move that one a bit. Okay, that one in a bit. There we go. Like I say, you could do multiple layers um, to make it a bit sturdier if you liked. Alright, so then I would uh, wait for that to dry, but you know, when you're doing a tutorial, we don't have time. Looks like a little doll furniture as well, doesn't it? <laughs> Alright, so like I say, that's one layer. You could then go on and make another four boxes and layer them on and put another layer and another layer and make an advent calendar. There you go, full of ideas. Right. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we've uh, cut another piece and this measures 10 by 5. Okay, I'll just zoom out on that a little bit now. 10 by 5 and then I've scored it at 5 and at 7.5. Okay, so, we, and then we, so then we're going to fold it in and then fold it up like that. So 5 by 10, score at five and then seven and a half okay and that we're going to glue on and this will help make our box more sturdy as well Doo 
do, do. Okay, do. People are starting their seasonal crafting. They're getting ready for craft fairs. That's if we're allowed to have any. If we haven't got total locked, locked down. But there's more than one way of doing things. You can always do virtual online craft uh, fairs, I suppose. So we're going to glue that straight on the top of the lid of that construction. Give that a press. Okay. Make sure it's on straight. Okay, and then that is going to be the easel for our card. So I'm just going to bob that to one side a minute and we're going to start and construct our card. So this is a piece of bumblebee, this is five by five, and then this is four and a half by four and a half, and then my stamping layer is going to be three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So I'll glue these together first and then we'll get them on the We'll get them on the box and then we'll do our stamping. Okay, so I'm just layering that on there, just centering it. Okay, try and make it so it's got the same increment all the way around. Okay, and then we're bringing this in and we're putting glue just on this panel here and then we're going to glue that to the bottom of our card. Okay, so this here goes on the bottom. And we're only gluing that section there, that bottom section. So all you want is glue on this bit here. You don't need glue anywhere else. Okay. It's awesome fun to make this. It's not difficult. Okay. Just do let your pieces dry in between because that's still wet. So it might go a little bit floppy on mine. But if you let yours dry in between, you'll be fine. So I'm going to line that up, okay, with the, the bottom and the side of there. And the bottom of the side of there. Okay. And then when it's not in use, that will fold flat, like so. Okay. And then we're going to have it stood up like so, with an easel component there. I might actually, I think I might actually put some pink card on there. Let me just get some more pink card. Change my mind. <laughs> I think I will. So I want four and a half by four and a half. I don't like all that yellow. There's too much yellow there for me. Let me just change my mind. So four and a half by four and a half. Four and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to layer that and it will help it be more sturdy as well. Okay. You could do as many layers as you wanted. You can have it as fancy as you want. You could use gold mirror card to make it look even nicer. You could do what you want. You could do what you want. Okay. There we go. That just uh, marries up that, I think, a bit more so that it matches in with that a bit better. All right. I like that. That's nice. Okay, so this is where we actually do some stamping now. So I've chosen, like I said, the um, fancy phrases. Okay, I'm just going to use that flower. Uh, what colour am I stamping in? Uh, I'm going to use, I've not even got it out. I'm going to use Memento. Okay, so let me, which way around does it go? Where around does that go, do you think? That way? I've not used this stamp. First time I've inked this stamp up. I think everything in my craft room looks like it's drying out from the from the heat. I think I need to open a window maybe. Okay. So let's hope this stamps nicely or else I'll have to do it again. So I'm just gonna stamp in the middle of my Little layer there, uh, about there, I think. I'll go about there. I think that'll be alright. Let's hope it's stamped nicely. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? And then I've just got some stamping blends. So I've got the Coco Rose, I've got just a, uh, I've got lovely light lipstick, lovely lipstick light, sorry. What's this one? Light Old Olive, what's this one? 
dark old olive. I think I'm just going to keep it really, really plain and I'm just going to really gently just add a little bit of colour. My uh, the tip end on this has gone uh, fairer. I think maybe, I don't know if I used it to colour some glitter card, I need to replace this pen. Let me use the other end. There we go. It's better. And you can colour in next to no time with these. Okay. You could do it with your watercolour pencils. I'm going to be doing it really quickly. You could take a bit more time over it. You could use your um, watercolour brushes, your aqua painters. Uh, what else have we got? Another leaf anywhere? I think that's it, isn't it? Okay, and then I'm going to use my lovely lipstick. And this is a pale one. Uh, this will dry slightly lighter when it's... Uh, when it's soaked into the card and it dries, it does dry a little bit lighter. So when you get the blends, do practice with them and have a little play with them first, because depending on what kind of card you're on, it can um, adjust the colour, because it depends how much it absorbs it. Du, 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 come on. This is boring for you to watch, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> That's how I designed my card, so hard lines. You can always fast forward it. <laughs> you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want. Okay, what else? Let's have this one. I'll have that one in that darker colour. And um, what else? I'll have these little buds. That's a lovely stamp. It's the first time I've used it. I think it's lovely. Might have to make something else out of it now. Right, and then I'm going in with Rococo Rose, which is just a slightly lighter colour. Alright, there we go. Nearly done. How lovely is that? I think that's really pretty. What a lovely stamp set. And very easy to colour because you've already got all the like shading in there on that one. So you don't really need to do a right lot. Most of the work's been done for you. Right, so let's get that attached onto our card base. And then we'll do a little sentiment which is going to... So we can prop that up. You know, so it'll prop up like that. Lovely vibrant colours. Beautiful. How pretty is that? Right, so I can fold that down. And... Is that right? Maybe if I had some ribbon I could have put a bow across, but I've not bought any because I'm mean. <laughs> I need to put an order in. I've not, uh, I've not bought hardly any ribbon and I looked in my stash and I was like, why haven't I bought any ribbon? What's wrong with me? Right, so I'm just wondering if I want to... Put some more white card on there. Can you tell that I've not planned it all the way? <coughs> I think I will. I think I need to. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... That's my scar button out of my trimmer on the floor. I think I might have to phone stamping up. Mine keeps falling out and it's starting to annoy me. Right, so what was that again? I've forgotten now. Was it three and... So I want it to be the same size. Three and three quarters by three and three quarters. We find a bit that's not bent. There we go. So, you know, I'm just changing my mind a little bit as I go. Because I have ideas in my head and then um, I don't always make samples for everything. Because the reason being, yeah, then you're using double the supplies. Uh, so, and I don't need two of everything. So sometimes I don't always do a sample. So that's why I adjust as I go. That's what us crafters do. Um, you know, we make it up, don't we, as we go. So lay that on there. Okay, let's get that centralised. Give it a press. So that's lovely and sturdy on there now. That's better, isn't it? Yeah, I think it would have not looked right if I'd have just left it all pink. I think that's a lot better. 
I think the light in here is not doing these colours any favours. They are beautiful, bright, vibrant colours. Let me see if I can zoom out ever so slightly. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, vibrant colours. Uh, I've got a big tree outside of my window, so unless the sun is absolutely blazing, then uh, the tree shades my... Can't win, really, can I? Anyway, not to worry. <laughs> so, I'm going to now do my um, sentiment. And I'm using... Happy birthday... No, birthday wishes, it says. That's what we're using. Stick that on a block. Uh, what colour shall I have? I'll go with black. We'll go with memento. Um, we'll stamp it there and see what that looks like. Not bad. Get off. And then I was going to use this punch, which is the Timeless Label Punch. Well, let's turn that over and give it a centralise it. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. And then I'm going to punch two of them out of my scrap bit there. And what we'll do is we will, and there's loads of different ways of doing this. Um, yeah, that'll do for me. So I'm going to have it like that. I've smudged my ink now. That's annoying. I'm going to do it again. That's annoying. Smudged my ink. Now I've ever stamped. Let's try again. <laughs> we'll get it right eventually. Not too There you go. Don't edit my mistakes. If I make a mistake, I leave them in. I don't, uh, don't edit them out. There we go. Right, I'll just leave that to dry so that it doesn't smudge. And then I'm going to just join these two together about there. Like so. Okay, okay. And then I'm going to just use some dimensionals and pop it up, and then that will have some height and will stop the easel part of the card from collapsing. At least that's the idea. I'm just going to use the edge of my dimensionals here. We don't waste. Don't waste anything. I use those for my sentiment. I try not to smudge. Okay, one that and one that. Turn that off. Turn that off. And then we'll centralise that over where we've got the two that got the join. Okay, that'll do for me. And then we take the backing off. I found one of these on one of my dog's paws the other day. I, I saw <laughs> dimensional backing on the dog. Right, so I'm going to just tip this up to myself a little bit. I want to centralise it to about there. Okay, and then that will hold like so and that has turned out to be one pretty little box i'm absolutely thrilled with that i think it's really lovely what i might do off camera is just add a few little sparkly gems round and about so there we go it will fold flat like so and then we've got the four boxes all the way around okay and then it lifts up like so like a, obviously it's an easel card so there we go go and give that a try I think that's really lovely and I think that stamp set is beautiful and those colours, go and check them out in the catalogue because my lighting doesn't do them any justice. Give it a try, thanks for watching, bye!